Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and my guest today is Kathy Sullivan. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Robert. Kathy is a program manager on the Visual Studio IDE team, and she's here to show us some of the new goodness coming in Visual Studio 2013. Exactly. A preview of which is available for your downloading pleasure. Uh, hopefully, you already knew that. Yeah. So, new things in the IDE. Oh, yeah. Why? What was wrong with the old one? Oh, Perfect, wasn't it? It was, actually, but we've just made it a lot better. Uh, let, let me show you a few okay. things um, that you're really going to like, I think. So, the first thing I want to talk to you about is how now we can sign into the IDE. And you might wonder, well, why would I want to sign into the IDE, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so the first thing you're going to get when you sign into the IDE is you're going to get your settings synchronized with Ooh, your environment, right? So, I first like time you install the preview, right? You're going to go and you're going to customize the IDE, right? Maybe you have a favorite theme. Uh, maybe you're one of the people that like line numbers on, like I am. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a couple text editor settings that you prefer. And usually, you probably manage this with uh, importing and exporting your settings. But today, once or you... Or you just yeah. try to remember the handful of things that you like. Exactly. And then after you repave your third machine for the fourth time that year, yes. you say to yourself, why do I have to re-enter this stuff over and over and over again? Exactly. So cool. now you only have to customize your machine once. Excellent. And we'll do the rest for you. So let me show you how this works. So in the upper right-hand corner, we now have a, a little sign-in area. So let's go and we'll sign in. And I'm going to use actually You're my own. You're also prompted to do that after installing the very first time you run Visual Studio. Exactly. So I've actually set up Visual Studio. And I said, don't sign me in now. And you can say sign in now or sign in later. And mm -hmm. you always have the chance to go back and sign in okay. once you've launched the IDE. So let's go and uh, use my own uh, live ID. And after I'm logged in, you're going to see some uh, really neat changes take effect here. Like your name and your picture. Exactly. Yep. And uh, so you'll notice that actually it didn't change my, uh, it should have switched to the light theme, but. Uh, but it <laughs> was, did change the scroll yes. bar. It did, yes. Okay. So uh, I'm using the enhanced scroll bar over here, which mm -hmm. I'll show you in a second. And you'll also see that I have line numbers on, which are not on by default normally. Right. And um, it should have switched my theme, but uh, I was playing around with it a little earlier, so uh, that's why it didn't okay. switch my, my theme. But now you can see in the upper right hand corner that the ID knows who I am. Uh, it has my name, it has my, my photo, as you said. And I can click on the badge and I can see some things about um, what accounts I'm using, right? Mm -hmm. I'm logged in, I'm using my visualstudio.com account, and I've got my team project set up here where I keep all my demo projects. And if I head down to account settings, I can see some things about the version I'm running here. Okay. And then if you're looking for the place to sign out of the ID, that's where you're going to find uh, that location. OK. Yeah. So what kinds of things uh, get transferred over or roamed? Yeah, so that's a great question. And like I always use uh, to find many things in the ID, quick launch. Just control Q. Your favorite feature. <laughs> exactly. From Visual Studio 2012. I said it then, I'll still say it. Exactly. So I can start typing, and I don't need to type the whole word like uh, Dimitri mentioned uh, mm -hmm. a couple uh, uh, times ago. And I get the first option, which is synchronize settings. And now I can also see that I can disable roaming. It's enabled by default. Mm -hmm. But I can also pick and choose the things that I want to roam. Uh, like I said, themes, fonts and colors, uh, changes that you make. Uh, maybe you set up some environment aliases in your IDE. Uh, maybe you have favorite keyboard uh, shortcuts that you've bound to, uh, to mm -hmm. different ones. And, and those are always tough ones to remember. Apparently, I need a restart here. Uh, fonts? <laughs> yes. And uh, anything that you make, uh, text editor customizations okay. as well, will um, we'll go and roam so those. So are there benefits to signing in if you disable syncing? Um, there are, and that we'll still we'll still know about the product that you've registered. So by okay. signing in, you're essentially registering uh, Visual Studio. So you'll still get all that goodness, and that you can now register right inside the product and uh, take care of all that there, okay. whether you choose to roam your settings or not. Okay. So, yeah. So while we're in this uh, dialogue, mm -hmm. I want to show you one thing that uh, you've probably heard about, but uh, we'll we see it in action here. And that uh, we now have a search box in the upper right-hand corner. I did of, not know that. Okay, one. well you cool. didn't. So yeah, so we've added search to tools options. Ooh. So um, what's a help me think of one of those pages that has a lot of controls? Pinned. And, uh, pin. So pinning. The uh, I always want uh, pinned. 
uh, document windows yeah. to show up on a on a oh yeah tabs to show up on a different yep. line. Yep. So here we so tabs and windows okay. here. Yep. Does that roam by the way? Uh, so pin tabs in a separate row. This one does not actually roam. Yes, but so Put that it's on the my list of things I'd like to exactly. See. It's the startup category. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the uh, text editor category. Okay. And then the um, appearance, which are fonts and colors, and then the the theme settings in here. But if we go look at something like the fonts and colors page. And while the uh, the layout here hasn't changed, the dialogue itself has now become Ooh, resizable, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you're traditionally you'd get like you know ten results, but now you have a lot more scrolling area cool. to find that item you're looking for. Um, and as you know, this has been one of those features everyone's asked for for a really long time, yep. and um, we're happy that we were able to to bring this cool. bring this into here. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing I want to show you again in the upper right hand corner. Uh, next to the smiley face, I'll show you in a minute, but we now have a flag up yes. here, and it's got a three next to it. And this is what we're calling our new notification center. So if I hover over the flag, it tells me what's in this hub that I'll show you in a second. Mm -hmm. And then it'll open the hub as soon as I click on the flag. So I've got yeah. some, some new stuff in here, right? Updates. Exactly. Uh, traditionally, we'd, we'd have our, in 2012, we had that balloon that popped up. Don't you love that traditionally? Yeah, it's, I know. It's sorry. It's a typical thing. <laughs> I know. Microsoft, for you, That's the right. current version is the next version. That's right. The version that the customers think is current is the past version to you. Exactly. And the version they think of as the past version is ancient history to us. It's so, and yeah. The next version for us is the one that comes after 2013, but that's science fiction to the customers. Exactly. It's, it's that it's disconnect. Always some, it's always it's something always, different, right? <laughs> yeah. It's always humorous. So the balloon that popped up, um, it was very vague. It said you had some updates. Yes. Um, it didn't really tell you what you had to update or um, really anything about it, right? Is it and important? It disappeared after a few seconds. Right. So if you stepped away from your desk to go get coffee right. or go get lunch and you came back, you missed it. For too long. To be to not be annoying, but too short if you actually wanted to do something. Exactly, with it. and if you X'd it out, the next time you launch Visual Studio, it comes back That's up. That's right. Right. So it um, it was actually effective in getting um, developers to want to uh, install and adopt our updates, but it wasn't. It didn't really give them insight into what was going on. No, and it also you would have a lot of updates to like NuGet packages it, exactly. or you know SQLite. I get that one all the mm -hmm. time. I may be in a yeah. project where I'm not using SQLite. Right. I don't necessarily need to update SQLite now. But I click on the balloon to see what needs to be updated. And while I'm in there, well, yeah, I might as well update. Then I have to restart. And then, you know, that breaks my flow. So exactly, the ability right. to know that there, are no, that there might be updates mm -hmm. and then go to it whenever I want. Yep. Is, Pick is and much choose, better. right? So think of it like a to-do list, right? Yes. Um, and now that it's not, it's not being intrusive, right? So I can easily glance yeah. up and see what's in that flag to decide if I want to go look in there or not. So, so when you hover, so the you hover over it and yeah. So the flag will tell you what's in there. I have okay. nothing new, so I know right. that I've already seen everything. So you can you can do a peek. And mm -hmm. then decide if it's something you need right now. If it's not, you continue on and go back. To exactly. The and That's if I just better. click in the editor, yep. it just disappears. It doesn't block anything that I care about right. or that I'm working on. So you'll now see all of your uh, things like product updates and extension updates. Maybe you have some samples installed. Mm -hmm. Any updates that get pushed out through the gallery will come in the notifications hub. Right. Um, also, things like we've streamlined our first launch uh, experience, and we used to be able to uh, opt into or download offline help there, but yep. we've moved that out to kind of simplify the that That's those good. steps and kind of get mm -hmm. you right into the IDE. So now, uh, stuff like that you'll find in the hub, places where we're trying to bring informational things that are relevant to you and that right. you actually care about. We're trying to bring them into one place so you can come and see, hey, what is it that is going on with my IDE? What do I need to uh, take care of? Yep. Uh, so awesome. also, if your trial is expiring, for example, you'll see a message like that. Uh -huh. uh, for the most part, these are informational. Mm -hmm. They're they're strictly optional. But something like your trial expiring, you might want to go and take care of that right. uh, before you're not able to use it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, um, does your Windows 8 developer license expiring show up in there? Uh, it doesn't, but that's definitely that's something. That's another one. Exactly. That would be uh, <laughs> that would be good two. for uh, future iterations. Okay. Of it. Yeah. Uh, so if I want to go and install something, I simply click on the title, and I get 
brought right to that location. Yeah, which, and you can yeah. just continue to go to this dialog oh, yeah. and go to updates. Right. And, the, right. and the hub is just really a place to surface these things. It isn't right. the, sole, um, the sole place that contains these. Is, so the, is the balloon gone? The balloon is gone. Right. No more in 2013. Okay. So, so if I were to say, oh, I don't actually uh, want this SDK, I can go and dismiss it. But if I go back into the extensions and updates manager, it'll still be there. Okay. Um, I'm just dismissing oh, the reminder, yeah. essentially. Very good. Yeah, and then if I want to clean them all up, I can uh, dismiss all of them, mm -hmm. and then you'll see that my flag is empty, hence the hub is also empty. Okay. So I can use the flag to kind of uh, sense what's in there and if I want to go and take a look at it as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, we streamlined the first launch experience. So now when you launch Visual Studio, you'll get the ability to sign in. And if you choose not to sign in, that's when you can pick a theme uh, as well. So we now have the blue theme. Uh, the that we've thing. integrated into the product. So uh, those who, I think it was, uh, we introduced it in update two, I uh -huh. think. Um, and also in the uh, Matt Johnson's color theme editor, yes. we had a, a version of the blue theme. But now it's uh, built right in to the IDE. And so I've got three themes to choose. Mm -hmm. So now when I start up the IDE, I get the option to pick one of these themes. And so I kind of have a better chance of, of landing in the theme that I'm most comfortable with and that mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy uh, writing code in, as opposed to sort of just whatever default theme is picked for me. Um, that's the one I end up in. In most cases, I don't know. Our developers right. didn't really know there were other themes. So we wanted to increase that awareness, so we brought that into the, okay, the first cool. launch experience. Yeah, I'm going to actually just switch over to the light theme real quick. And show you some of the uh, some of the minor but but really uh, useful updates we've made to the to the overall look and feel of the ID. So one of them that is actually one of my favorites. If I zoom into the lower right hand corner, you'll notice that we now have some we have a lot more definition mm -hmm. around these windows. So I can find out where something ends and something begins. And if you wanted to go in, let's say, uh, make the Solution Explorer window bigger. In Visual Studio 2012, it was really hard to find that point where the cursor changed from my okay. arrow to the, uh, to the two arrows. So we added a lot more definition around um, places in the IDE where you need that separation. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a splash of color <laughs> across yes. the IDE. And uh, you know, the, the Solution Explorer is one of those uh, great places to see that examples of it, like the folder icon, mm -hmm. where you can use it as a beacon to find your way around. Uh, the IDE, whether it's in Solution Explorer or in the toolbar, or the, the, the toolbar, excuse me. Um, and then some other little things, we've increased the, the contrast, and so you can tell now what, um, what is selected. I think before it was a gray color, so it really, okay. it really blended in uh, you know, the, the colors, in a bad way. The colors actually help. Yeah. I was a couple days ago bouncing back and forth between 2012 and 2013, <laughs> and I mean, I'd seen the colors before, and I thought, yeah. oh, you know, that's nice. Yep. But I didn't think that I would ever really care. But <laughs> the other day, I was bouncing back from 2012 to 2013, and when I was in 2013, it's it's colorful, it's bright, it's happy. It is, and yes. It it actually made a difference. I was surprised. Yeah, if, it, I think <laughs> I was surprised that it made a difference to me because oh, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. usually just heads down on the code. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think a lot of folks are going to find that it's going to feel a lot better yeah. and just feel more natural as opposed to. Um, always missing something. And it really helps if you yeah. are bouncing back and forth between 2012 and 2013. Well. <laughs> You've got the same project open in both. Exactly. Because in this instance, I had a Windows 8 project open in 2012 and the 8.1 version open in 2013, yep. and it's essentially the same project. Sure. And with the exact same names, of course. Yep. And now I can easily tell which one I'm in. So if, if for no other reason than that, it's a great feature. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> really great to hear. Um, so, but. Also, if you're working uh, exclusively in 2013 and you have multiple instances open, which a lot of folks do, mm -hmm. uh, we now have uh, made some some changes mm. to the way we display okay. the uh, the title of them. So before they looked identical, so you didn't know which one you had your focus right. in. Uh, so now the the logo's purple and it has a, a little bit of a darker text, yep. and the inactive one is just a little grayed out. Um, just some minor things to cool. to help you use the IDE better. Um, and then one other thing I want to call out, I, I, can't, I can't show you here, but it's really important that um, everyone knows that we're, we really invested heavily in high DPI for these new dense screens, mm -hmm. these high dense screens that are coming out. I mean, you're seeing them in all these conferences, we're releasing more devices. And across every team in Visual Studio, we had this concentrated effort to make sure that Visual Studio looks beautiful on these screens. 
Um, and we knew we knew it had been a problem for a while. And we had a lot of scaling problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we had buttons that were clipped, uh, text you couldn't read, uh, just to name a few. And so we've I think we fixed over 200 bugs uh, in 2013 to make sure that uh, when you're running on high dense screens that you see something that's usable and uh, cool. that just looks really good. So um, we obviously can't see it here today, but uh, <laughs> right. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That helps people who are who are using Visual Studio on their tablet like devices. Exactly, yes. Yep. yep. Cool. So it's it's gonna look really crisp. Um, and it's it's pretty exciting. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the next thing we should jump into is some of the uh, editor improvements that okay. we've made, right? So for writing code and navigating code and finding your way around your code. Um, so we actually pulled a bunch of the or the top uh, Features from the productivity power yep. tools, and you know, we as you know, we like to do that every release. We like to take those top features and pull them in and make them first-class citizens right. uh, in the IDE. So, uh, a couple of them we've taken over is uh, auto brace completion, mm -hmm. uh, the enhanced scroll bar, um, and then we've also made some other improvements to our Navigate 2 experience. And then um, I'll show you this new Peak experience that yes. we have that you've ar you've already seen too. But it's a uh, it's so cool that you peak have to, cool. you have to see it again, right? Um, so yeah, so in the uh, auto brace completion, so if I start, um, let's go and create a new method here. And when I add my first curly brace, you'll see that the second curly brace is automatically completed mm -hmm. for me. And this is going to help me write code a lot faster and write my code a lot cleaner. Right. Um, it also works in, uh, in C++, so if I jump over to uh, a C++ file and um, I have my, my quotes. I get uh, the, the quote com completion okay. there as well in C++. Um, along with this, I also get some really, um, uh, let's see, um, I also get some automatic code formatting as well. So if I do like a 1 plus 1, and then I add that uh, semicolon, okay. you'll notice we're going to add, the, add that white space in for you. Um, again, it's going to help you write your code a lot faster and keep it a lot cleaner as you're going. And you can also. Uh, customize. So I just typed in the beginning of code formatting. Um, and so you can actually come in here, okay. yeah, and you can, uh, these groups right here um, for indentation, new mm. lines, spacing, and wrapping, uh, they've now added some customizations around those. So if you're not happy with the defaults or you want to make some changes, you can go and make those, um, those changes as well, uh, specifically for C++. Cool. Uh, and then another neat thing, I I should show you is the ability to jump between your C++ implementation files and your header files really easily. Uh, before you had to right click in the editor and I think it was, um, we've still left the option there but now it's more of a toggle as opposed to uh, we just take you there and leave you there. Okay. Um, and then you have to find your way back. So I can now toggle between these two. Um, oh, that's not, the, that's not the right one. But now I can uh, toggle between these two or I can use the shortcut so I open the header file. I can use control K and control O to jump between oh, these cool. really quickly because mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm you know writing code in both these files and I need to get back and forth between right. them pretty quickly. So let's head back here. Um, and then actually there was the the third uh, productivity power tool feature. It was move line up and down. Ah, yes. Okay. And holding down the Alt key and up and down, I can now take uh, a single line and move it around, or I can um, I can highlight a couple lines. And using the Alt key, I can move a couple lines up and down. So mm -hmm. I can do, you know, I can refactor really quickly when I can just grab a couple lines and use my keyboard uh, to kind of move them right. around and and um, act really fast that way. So moving on, the enhanced scroll bar that I showed you that uh, I like to roam with my settings. I can now right click on the scroll bar, and I get my scroll bar options right mm -hmm. from uh, right from the scroll bar. I can also use quick launch and, and type in scroll bar and I can jump right to that page where I can go and make uh, make my changes, and I like to show the the options window right next to it because you'll see that I've got a lot of annotations in this scroll bar. I have um, my changes, which are that yellow mm -hmm. the, the yellow mark there. Uh, the blue line across is my uh, where my cursor yep. is. The red uh, annotation is an error in my code, and then I've got some breakpoints uh, down below. And this is super helpful if you're setting those breakpoints and then you've got this really long file and yeah. you're like, oh, where was where that breakpoint I set, yeah. right? So the enhanced scroll bar is going to give you that, uh, that, that nice aerial view of your code and you can, you can sort of just click around in it and we'll jump right to that location. Yep. 
And then you've got two types of scroll bars. You've got the bar mode, which is the traditional Windows scroll bar. And then the map mode, which I'm using, and I'm using the, the medium size, but you can also pick a couple different sizes based on a, how, maybe how much screen real estate right. you have. And then I also have the preview on as well, which uh, gives me sort of that, um, that zoomed in view of my code as yeah. I hover over it. So I can see uh, exactly where, it's, you know, I can make sure I want to go there before I actually click mm -hmm. there. The next really great addition to the editor is our new uh, and improved Navigate 2 experience. So Navigate 2 is control comma is the shortcut. And um, I have had shopping cart underneath my, my cursor. Mm -hmm. And instead of popping up a dialog that was blocking the UI, and, and uh, if you needed to go back and look at your code, you either had to move the dialog or hit cancel. Right. It's now right in line. Cool. So I get all my results uh, similar to the find and replace experience we introduced in 2012. It's now in the upper right hand corner. Um, it's not blocking my code, and I can still I can use the keyboard to to scroll through it, and I also get the goodness of the preview tab as well. So I didn't have shopping yeah. cart open, but it opened it in the preview tab, and as I go through this list, you'll see you know my my editor is changing to reflect mm, the item I select, nice. and I'm still using the preview tab, which is pretty yeah. great. Um, I get a lot of the familiar stuff from the old Navigate 2 experience, like the icons to help me figure out. Um, what what it is I'm actually looking at and the type, and then I also get the path. And can for you some of those. can you rep right now replace shopping cart with like shopping cart remove? Can you type in there and do a search? I can yes. And it feels yep. excellent. So, yeah, isn't that great? Right. So yeah. you were looking for shopping cart and you realized you were looking for something entirely different. Yep. So it's just totally. And I can go and there. change that search. Cool. Yeah. And then I can. Uh, Escape out, and you'll see I'm jump, I'm brought right back to the place right. where I was. So I don't have to find my way back. Oh, where was it that I was trying to navigate? You know, I didn't find what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe for example, but now I'm right back to where I was, you know, working, and I can get right back to work. Excellent. Yeah. So now I can make some more informed decisions before I go and actually select that result. So mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So the next uh, is is uh, I'm going to jump to this other uh, application I have here. And um, I, I really love Peak. I think it's I think it's going to change the way people work. And I really think our, our team is uh, you know they they've been working really hard on this, mm -hmm. and it's really cool to kind of see it all come together. See people get really excited about it. So Peak is um, it's essentially a go to definition, but it's now in line, right? right. And so uh, go to definition was F12, but the shortcut for Peak is Alt F12, and um, but now I get this um, this sort of inline view. My code is kind of pushed out of the way, yeah, right? Also, I yeah. just noticed that it yeah. also shows you the scroll And that's really bar. cool because the peak window is it's a, it's it's tiny. Yeah. Right? You know, I'm looking at my laptop here and it's taken up a big chunk of my screen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I get my enhanced scroll bar to help me find my way around my peak window right. as well. I've got line numbers on. I've got full colorization in here. Um, you know, I've got things like um, you know where my current focus is as well. Um, we utilize the preview tab as well. Is that so resizable? I just noticed it's not resizable okay. right now. Yeah, um, but that's definitely something that the team's considering. And it's also read only. It is read only. Yeah. That's another thing that the the team's considering for the final right. release of okay. 2013. Yeah. Um, so from here, I can I can actually keep drilling in in the peak window. So let me uh, scroll down and find something else I want to go to the definition for. And I can also I can Alt 12 on that. And then if I pick something else, I Alt 12 on that. You'll now see I have a, a little breadcrumb oh, here. See those are, dots? Yeah. yeah. So I can find my way back within my peak window mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of trail back to where I was looking. Um, I can use the uh, mouse to click through these. Mm -hmm. Or I can actually use the shortcut. So the shortcut is Control Alt uh, minus oh, to go back and then Control Alt equals, it shares the same key as the plus sign, okay. uh, to go forward and backward through Sweet. these. Yeah, so I can use the peak window without even taking my hand off the keyboard mm -hmm. as well. And then I, to close the peak window, I just hit escape. And then my code collapses back in. So one other uh, potential idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. is that the solution, you figure out some way in the solution explorer to show you what project those files are in. Mm. It's, yeah, it might. It might. I don't know how to do that without having the solution explorer be well, right, flipping yeah. back and forth. But exactly, um, there that, might be a way to do it, or there might be a button you press to sort of 
s temporarily sync the solution explorer so you can see where that exactly file is. yeah that or or maybe it's something there. where you just um, if the project isn't expanded you just highlight it or something yeah. you know just the way something like that. yeah that could be really interesting yeah so then the the last thing I want to show you that's um, really really awesome are these code lenses. If mm -hmm. you look right above uh, line 16 here, I actually have two of the lenses. There's a couple other lenses, um, but since I'm not actually connected to a, a team project that supports the other lenses, I only get two of them right now. So I get the first one, which is references, and I can, um, I can also hover over them to get like a peek of the code nice. <laughs> on the, in the tooltip, and I can use my keyboard to uh, up and down arrow throughout them. And then mm -hmm. enter would just take me to, to that location. The the references are, are are very cool. Yeah. To be able to do that in line without necessarily right clicking and view all references and have another dialogue that comes up. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I get a quick peek at it. Um, you know, think of it like a, a GPS for your code, right? Mm -hmm. you're, 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 as you're driving, you know, uh, actually we were just having a conversation of uh, Italy, right? And, you know, the GPS was super helpful in Italy, right? Told you when your exits were coming, uh, maybe there's restaurants off to the side mm -hmm. uh, when you're going over the speed limit, which is very important. <laughs> exactly. And it, it's also, yeah. it, it tells you right then and there if you've got a method that's not being used because it would have zero references. Exactly. I yeah. discovered that the other day in, in yep. the same code I was looking at. I looked at this, at this method, it's got zero references. Right. I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. Right. Well, delete. Right. I should, I should do something. Immediately, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yep. Uh, and then escape closes it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other lens I have here is my uh, unit test lens. And I get a nice little, uh, well, it's cut off here, but a nice, nice little green arrow that tells me that this unit test actually passed. Mm -hmm. And I could go and um, double click on that. And now I open up that unit test page cool. there. Yeah. Um, but then there's also some shortcuts for these, which if I hold down the Alt key, I see that, um, so I only have the second and the third one enabled here, but What's Alt-2, the one? <laughs> the, it's one of the TFS ones, oh, okay. yeah. So TFS is going to really light this up and add a, right. about three, I think, or four more. Because it shows more. you who, when code was last checked in, who checked exactly, it in, yeah. etc. So let's go, uh, so they're under uh, code information indicators, yeah. And you can see that I get other it things is. like who tested it, mm -hmm. um, what, what are the change sets that are associated with them? And then from there, I could double click on those chain sets and right. open them right up. So this is really great if you're, what, what happened to this code? You know, yes. Who touched it? You know, uh, what's the, what was the, pro the history of it? So TFS yeah. is really going to make the, the data that you're going to see in these code lens is a lot richer. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah. All right, so the last few things I want to talk about, um, as always, since we're in preview, we want feedback. Yes. And we, we, we want thoughts, uh, likes, dislikes, loves, uh, we want them all. And so there's a few ways that you can, or you, <laughs> feed, uh, customers can give <laughs> us feedback right from within the IDE. Uh, and up to, next to Quick Launch and the new notifications flag, we have Send a Smile. Mm -hmm. And if folks are already using uh, some of the recent releases of Office, we, it's very similar to that. So right from within the IDE, you can either send us a smile or, yeah. or send us a frown. And this is pretty instantaneous. So do you, um, get, do you have a, a prediction or a pool <laughs> as to whether you get more smiles or frowns and what the percentage I, will I'm be? Sure, I'm sure someone, someone is uh, <laughs> tracking that somewhere. You yes. should do that. Yeah. Um, but this is actually what I really love about Send a Smile is that I can be at my desk throughout the day and I just pull up this feedback site. I can search for either things I'm working on or things I'm really interested in, in seeing how customers are reacting mm -hmm. to. And it's so, it's just right there. It's right at my right. fingertips. So it makes the collection of feedback a lot um, easier for folks on the team. Cool. Yeah, and then the last thing, I'm going to go up to Tools Options and down to the Extensions and Updates Manager. And I'm going to search for the, uh, the feedback tool here. And this is just another, um, Another way to give us feedback, but the okay. feedback tool is going to give us a lot more, uh, a lot richer data. So, the, uh, folks who are using 2012, they probably noticed that we we really invested in performance and you know moving things onto different threads so that you're not being blocked from doing your work, whether you're loading a solution or building a solution, for yep. example. And how we found those scenarios where customers were sitting and waiting or Visual Studio was hanging is folks who installed this tool and sent us. Um, lots of data that we were able to use to analyze and figure out exactly where these problems were and pinpoint these issues. 
So this tool is going to give us more than just your sentiment, whether you're happy or, right. or sad. Or, you know, uh, this is going to give us a lot of information that we can really use to um, improve areas, especially like performance. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Yeah. And then, of course, there's also the user voice site. Exactly, yes. So if you just want to, to tell the team directly, like yep. this, didn't like that, where's this, mm -hmm. you can use the, the smile or frown. Exactly. Um, if you want to involve the community, get votes behind exactly. your, your ideas, and user voice is still a great place. Yep. And uh, connect for bugs, <laughs> Yes. as always. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, it's it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so the productivity power tools, um, pretty much everything that was in the the pro power tools is now in the product, right? Um, just there might the, be a couple things that didn't make it yeah, in. Yeah, just the ones I mentioned we brought over. Okay, um, this time around, some of them were in previous. Uh, were got into t to 2012. 2012, exactly. Yes. Yep. Um, so this time it was just the auto brace completion, the move line up and down, and the enhanced scroll bar. Okay. Yep. So would we? Could we expect additional productivity power tools? Um, the great thing about that was it was a way for you to try out ideas yeah. without making it an official feature of the product. Exactly. Right. Yep. If you put an idea into the product and then you change your mind, now you're cutting features, which is not always it, good to do. Exactly. You put it in extension and you try something and it fails miserably, you just say, oh, all right, that failed miserably. Yep. Thanks for helping us right. determine that that was a bad idea. Yep. Let's redo it. So would we expect to see? Those types of things? I definitely think so, okay. yeah. Uh, like you said, it's one of the best ways for us to get our you know, early ideas and early you know, prototypes that are, in some cases are pretty polished mm -hmm. <laughs> um, out in front of our customers, get their feedback, have them tell us what they love, what they wish it would do. Right. Um, I, I think you're, you're going to continue to see it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Robert. All right, if you uh, have Visual Studio 2013, if you've downloaded it and installed it, hopefully you learned a couple new things. Uh, definitely try out uh, the things in here. We think that they'll definitely improve your productivity. If you haven't downloaded it yet, go get it. What are you waiting for? And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.